Hi there and welcome back to the Dental Advisor. This video is once again about dental photography using a mobile phone, but in this video I will be showing you pictures taken using the phone along with the other accessories I talked about. In the last video I showed you some retractors, contrasters and the very nifty selfie flash which can be used as a light source for mobile phone photography. Now let's start with the clash of the retractors. As you can see, I have three on display. The clear blue one on the right is the conventional retractor that most of us use, while the one in the center is a C-shaped single retractor set. And the last one on the left is an elliptical retractor and the one which I use most often. Why? Well, to throw some light on it, I did a small test with the phone camera and the retractors with just ambient light coming from three tube lights in my clinic. The subject was my own mouth and my able assistant Dr. Aisha was behind the camera. In the blue corner looking like two crescent moons joined in the hip like Siamese twins, you have the conventional retractor. The field of view that it provides is great, but wait till you see the next picture. The first contender challenging the conventional retractor is the C-shaped singles that the patient uses to retract while the dentist takes the photograph. You can immediately see the increased field of view and the fact that light is now reaching further back into the recesses of my jowls. However, when we look at the elliptical singles retractor, which are once again handled by the patient, the field of view remarkably increases. And a lot more light comes in, so much so that with the same distance and lighting as with the other retractors, if you look at this picture, my incisors look overexposed, my central incisors that is. Now next we look at the setup required for taking occlusal pictures. I use my elliptical retractors and a front surface mirror which is slightly angled. The angle helps in reaching further back while not compromising on the ergonomics. The patient holds the retractor and pulls on either side while the dentist places the mirror on the lower arch giving you a mirror view of the upper arch. Now with the other free hand, he or she can take the photograph with the mobile phone. Once cropped, the previous picture looks like this. Now I must admit, I have a wide mouth opening and that has allowed the capture of teeth all the way back to the third molars. It may not be the same case in most patients. To take a lower occlusal, reverse the position of the mirror and place it against the upper arch so that the lower arch is now in the mirror view. And once cropped, you can get a pretty decent occlusal view picture of the lower arch. Hmm, nifty. Now to go one step further in enhancing your occlusals, you may use an occlusal contrastor like the one I am holding. In fact, in this picture, I'm holding both the mirror and the contrastor. An occlusal contrastor blocks out the lip, the moustache, the nose hair, <laughs> whatever might be construed as a distraction. And the same can be used for the lower arch for the same effect. The contrastor also acts as a retractor, keeping the cheeks away. And once cropped, this is what it looks like. Mmm, pretty cool, huh? For side profile pictures, you need the retractors, a different contrastor as you can see from the picture, and this is called a tongue contrastor, but it can also be used as a cheek contrastor too. In this picture, I'm holding both retractors with my hands, while Dr. Aisha has taken a profile photograph with the mobile and a selfie ring flash attached. Info on the selfie ring flash can be had from the earlier video on mobile photography. Close cropped, you can see that the flash adds some unwanted light bouncing off one of the retractors. Now, what I have done is given up one of the retractors and replaced it with the tongue contrastor placed inside the buccal vestibule, while Aisha has taken the photograph with the same setup on the phone. After cropping the picture, you can appreciate what the contrastor does. And here, both profiles are set side by side just to show you the advantage of using a contrastor in a side profile photograph. 
If you're into aesthetic dentistry, then you will have to take pictures of the upper anteriors from canine to canine. And this is one place where the contraster really helps. As you can see, I am holding the retractors while Aisha is placing the contraster against my upper front teeth from the palatal side. Once cropped, the teeth pop out and the lower incisors do not provide any sort of visual distraction. Sometimes we need to take buckled views of our work, especially to show the contour of a restored class 2 situation. In this setup, I have a tongue contraster in the lingual vestibule, while Aisha is holding the mirror in the buckle vestibule with one hand, while taking the picture with the other hand. After cropping, you can see how using a lingual contraster in this situation has really taken away every possible distraction from the viewer. Most of the time, however, you will be taking occlusal pictures of single teeth and this can be achieved simply with a retractor and a mirror. Use the digital zoom on the mobile but do not go beyond 2x and you can get pretty decent pictures of single teeth. You gotta be kidding me. No, 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 I'm dubbing. I'm not shooting the video right now. Please, what is going on with the universe? So there you have it. All you have to do is get on the bandwagon and start snapping and creating your portfolio of your dental work. Now dental photography was never any easier so you have no excuse. Get off that shelfie and start making selfies. <laughs> Thanks for dropping by for another little contribution from the Dental Advisor. If you have any queries, you can reach out to me on the email provided. You can give me suggestions, you can ask me doubts, and probably ideas for future videos. Oh, until we meet again, goodbye.